We just stated the D separation theorem for conditional independence in directed graphical models. And in this video, let's take a look at a example. Let's work out an example. Actually, a, actually a few examples. So let's write down a graph. Let's write down a little graph and we'll we'll see what we can determine using the D separation theorem. So I picked a graph that would be nice for this. So let's draw this little graph. It's going to have a sort of X shape here. And then we're going to go down, have a few other vertices downstream. Something like this. And let's number these vertices. So we'll have this will be 1, 2, 3, 4. Keep it, we'll keep it ordered. I'll make this 5 to keep it ordered. 6, 7, 8. So that lower numbers always precede higher numbers. So this is a nice little graph. And let's condition on, let's condition on something. So let's condition on 3. So I picked say that C, so we're conditioning, remember above here, C was the thing that we we're going to be thinking about conditioning on, and so we're going to think about sets A and B that are D separated by C, or we'll see if they are if they are D separated by C. So C here will be just this vertex number three, and we we'll sort of associate, you know, we'll associate some random variables, so I'm associating some random variables, x1 up to x8 with each of these vertices. And let's go ahead and draw that fact that that's going to be conditioned on. So I will, following the convention of shading the thing that we're conditioning on, we'll shade number three. All right, so now let's see. So now what do we want to know? We want to know for pairs, so let's think about just, just to keep things simple, let's just think about pairs of individual random variables. And we want to know things like is xi conditionally independent of xj given c? And in this case c is x3. So the D separation theorem, let's remind ourselves what the D separation theorem says. D separation says if a and b are D separated by c then they are conditionally independent, given C. So here, if we had two vertices, like let's say, let's take 1 and 4. So if, so if I is 1 and J is 4, so let's go ahead and put that. Let's go ahead and put I. Let's make a little, maybe we'll, maybe we'll make a little table here. So we'll have I and J, and we'll determine whether I and J are D separated. So if I and J are, are 1 and 4, then to know if they're if if they are if xi and xj are conditionally independent given x3 then we need then if we can determine if they're deseparated then we can say yes if we determine that they're not deseparated then we don't know so let's see how do we determine if they're deseparated well what is deseparation deseparation is a and b are deseparated if all paths from a vertex of a and in this case it would just be you know say 1 to a vertex of B, so that would just be all paths from 1 to 4, if all paths from 1 to 4 are blocked with respect to C. So all paths from one of these vertices, from I to J, is blocked by C. So what does it mean for something to be blocked? Let's, let's write down here what it means. What does it mean? Remember, what it, well, let's, we can remind ourselves here, this was the definition of blocked. A path between two vertices is blocked with respect to C if it passes through a vertex V such that either A, the arrows are head to tail or tail to tail, and V is in that. So let's make a first condition down here. So the first possibility for something to be blocked, so let's make a little table of rules. So we'll have some rules. So rules. We have something like this. This is a head-to-tail relationship, or we have a tail-to-tail -tail relationship. 
something like this along our path, then this is blocked if that vertex, let me say it this way, I'll just draw it sort of visually, it's blocked if that vertex is being conditioned on. So it's blocked if that vertex is being conditioned on. Let me make that a little dark. And if we have, and if it's if it's not conditioned on, then it's not blocked. On the other hand, maybe use a different color. Let's so if we have a head-to-head -head relationship along the path, then this is blocked. It's blocked at that vertex. If uh, if that vertex, so what was B? So that was that was A. This was this was condition A, and this will be for B. So maybe maybe I'll maybe I'll write this. So this would be case A, and this would be case B. And for B, what was the criterion for some for a path to be blocked? It was blocked if it passes through a vertex V such that, in the case of B, the arrows are head to head. The vertex is not in C, and none of its descendants are in C. So for this one, blocked if, let's say, no, so not, well let me, maybe I'll label it V, V not in C, and no descendants in C. So in our case, this is saying it's blocked if V is v is not equal to x3, v is not equal to 3, rather, and none of its descendants are equal to 3. So these are our rules. These are our, these are our, two, our two sort of rules that we will use to determine if two vertices are d-separated. Okay, so let's think about let's think about one and four. So let's think about let's let's start with just just a nice simple one, one and four. Actually, let me move this over a little bit so we have room because we're going to make a list of these. Okay, so for one and four. Is the path so all the paths are all the are all the paths from one to four blocked? That's what we need to determine in order to determine if this is d separated. So there's only one path from one to four, right? It's one, three, four. Maybe I'll put that. So so one, three, four, and is it d separated? Well, there's only one vertex on the path. It's three. And does it satisfy one of? So is it blocked? Is it is it does it satisfy A or B? Well, it's a head to tail relationship, so it looks like this one. And it's conditioned on, so it's blocked. So this is blocked, so this is D separated. So yes, it is D separated. And so we can determine that X1 and X4 are conditionally independent given X3. Let's think about 1 and 2. So are one and two, are one and two d separated, given c. So here, remember c. So we're always conditioning on three here. This is our set c. So one and two. What's well there, again? So, so since this is a tree, there's always going to be a unique path between any two vertices. So we only need to consider one path. That makes this a nice simple, simple sort of graph to work with. So one and two, we go. One, two, three, two. This is a head to head relationship. So is B satisfied? It's blocked if V is not in C and no descendants are in C, but 3 is in C. So it's not blocked. So no, not blocked. So we cannot determine, it's undetermined whether 1 and 2 are conditionally independent given 3. So we cannot say that they're necessarily dependent, nor can we say that they're not.
Let's think about another one now. Let's think about 4 and 5. So 4 and 5, there's again a unique path here. So 4, 6, 5, is this path blocked or not? Well, we have a head-to-head -head relationship here. So that would be case B. And it would be blocked if V is not in C and no descendants are in C. Well, 6, so 6 is V in this case. 6 is not in C and it has no descendants in C, right? So that is blocked. So you're starting to see a pattern now. And let, let's, let's take a, let's, 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 let's write down, let's annotate this graph in a way that will make this a little bit easier. So whenever we have a, this sort of situation, there's always a tail involved, right? And it's blocked if that vertex is being conditioned on. So let's do this. So whenever we have something which can, is conditioned on, let's go ahead. We know, we know that we're never going to go through this tail, right? Because it's blocked. Anything, any path that goes through that tail is one of these things. And the same for this tail. So let's annotate these with these red, red dots. So that's like a stop sign. So you can't go through there. And let's think about case B. Let's annotate it to, to denote case B. So case B is, if it's a head-to-head -head relationship, it's blocked if the vertex is not in C and no descendants to C. So let's look wherever we have head-to-head -head relationships. And let's see. Let's annotate the ones. Let's block the head-to-head -head paths that are, are, are following this this situation. So this one, 3 is in C, so we don't need to we don't need to indicate that. But 6 is not in C and it has no descendants in C. 6 is not in C and has no descendants in C. So let's make a little maybe we'll put a little dot between these two guys here. Something like this, a little red stop sign. So you can't go from, you know, through 5 6 to 4 or 4 6 to 5. So now we can just very quickly read off these properties, right? 1 to 4, boom, blocked, goes through that stop sign. 1 to 2, not blocked, there's no red stop sign. 4 to 5, blocked, it goes through this stop sign. Let's think about another one. 4 to 7, or 7, there's 7. 4 to 7 is not blocked because it does not pass through. This is only a stop sign between these, these two heads here. So this is a no. So they are not deseparated because the path, there is only one path, and so so every path, so so there was a path, right? In order for, to be deseparated, every path would have to be blocked. And we had a path here, 4, 6, 7, that was not blocked. So it is not deseparated. Let's do a couple more. 4, 8. 4, 8 is clearly deseparated. How about, how about 4, 6? They're squeezing these together here. 4 and 6. 4, 6 is not blocked, so that's not deseparated. What about 2 and 7? 2, well, it's clearly going to be blocked here. It'd have to go through this stop sign. So 2, 7 is deseparated. Do a couple more. 2, 5. 2 to 5, clearly blocked. It would have to go through both of these. It would have to go through this one and this one, right? It would have to go through this one because it was going 4, 6, 5. So that is deseparated. And let's do one more. Let's do 5, 8. 5, 8. 5, 8. That would have to go through this stop sign and these. So that's clearly blocked also. So that's a yes. So that was amazing, right? We were able to just just immediately read off these conditional independence properties from the graph.